Hi, Karen. Good morning. I'm just waiting here to see if anybody else joins us before I start to paint this um, red crested cardinal. It's kind of a different cardinal. I don't think I've seen any around here. I think it's awfully pretty. Morning. <coughs> Excuse me. I have kind of a different setup here with this canvas light that I'm using, and you can see a little bit of the ring light on the photograph. I'm not sure how to better uh, position this, but we'll see how this goes. I, I want it to be able to get up close to the uh, painting. This is like my third week of doing this, so I hope that each week that I'll get more figured out for how to uh, best set everything up. I remembered this week to turn off my uh, notifications for my phone because last week my phone rang while uh, I was in the middle of it, or two weeks ago. Are you a painter, Karen? You know, some people that check in uh, are painters and others just like to watch, and, and that's all good. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Hope your morning is going well. And I was just saying to Karen that this is a red-crested cardinal, and... Um, I'm going to start out by do, using some of the transparent colors. I did that uh, a while back when we had our class, Cheryl, and and I think, uh, I don't know why I stopped. I think I just ran out of some of the colors, but um, I was reminded about it again and and bought some, and I and I like how it is. The, the transparents have a real pure color to them when you put them down first. And then you can add your opaque colors over top. Let's see. I'm not sure how that works when people request to be part of it, but I just said yes. Welcome. Tom Jones in Dreams. It's one of the one of the um, accounts that I follow, big Tom Jones fan. Yeah, it's it's a really pretty bird, and this is a great photograph. Um, you can find a nice reference that has really good light on it. It uh, it makes it that much easier to get the bird uh, to get a real uh, sense of roundness to them and. Uh, dimension. That's the word I was looking for. I guess I could start soon. Oh. Cheryl, is, I hope you're still with me. It said that you're unable to join. Okay, well, I'm going to um, go ahead and get started. Okay. Like I was saying, I'm going to start with the transparents and a real transparent red medium, a pretty color. Just use a little bit of turpinoid and come down in here. There we go. I used to use a lot of brushes when I paint it, but I pretty much just Use one brush now and just clean it out in between because I'm lazy. I don't like to clean them. But it works out okay for me. And sometimes I decide, oh, it needs more of that just, just after I've cleaned it. So, like this time. Okay. 
I love red in a painting. I'm just like so drawn to the color red. Okay. So now I'm going to do for the, his back that's lit up. I see purple and blue. So I'm going to use a little ultramarine, which is also a transparent. I'm just doing a light, a thinned out coat at this point. Kind of establish everything. Okay. And next I'm going to put a little bit of the ultramarine into this area here, just kind of lightly. I see it mixed in with the white. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to get some of the sap green going in the background. So this won't be the only color that goes back here, but just to kind of get some background color in there. I also use a little bit of liquid. Kind of makes everything flow better. I used to wait till pretty far in to do anything with the background, but then I just learned it. It makes it just more cohesive if I get started and then I can always throw colors into the background that I add as I go along. And actually, a lot of times I, when I paint, I tone my canvas. So I think I just have this uh, aversion to having the white hang out for very long. It just is very uh, distressing to me. <laughs> I paint a lot with red on the background because of how much I love red. And I'll do it with acrylic many times, uh, like a cad red light. So you've got your mid-tone already established when you do that. And it's easy to just dive right in. But for today's purposes, I thought it would be better just to start with a blank canvas. And I, the last time I did this, I painted on masonite board. And it was, uh, you know, it's different. Every surface you paint on has like a different feel and way you operate. But I would say I paint on canvas more often. So I went back to doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now I'm going to paint that nose and do a little bit of alizarin and white. Kind of get that pinky color. And throw in a little, my favorite, uh, Naples Reddish Orange by Lucas, because it gives it a little... Um, warmth. Okay, it's a pretty good start there. And I should put a color on this branch. I think I'm going to do uh, a combination of two different transparents, uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Like that's my favorite go-to dark. So I'm gonna put a little bit here and make the branch a little skinnier because I thought it was just a, a little too big for my purposes. 
And then I'll go a little lighter up here just to get some hair. And I just realized I didn't put green under there. And I'm also going to use a little of this on his tail, under part of his tail. Okay. Let's do some green here. Sap green, transparent. It's a real pretty one by Rembrandt. These transparents are a little more expensive, but like I said, the pigment is just so pretty. Um, yeah, Rembrandt sap green. There are some sap greens, uh, I learned the hard way, that are opaque. Uh, Lucas is one that comes to mind, and it won't do the same thing if you're trying to do the transparents first and then add more opaque color. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of purple now, uh, some dioxine purple, which is a nice transparent. And this one is um, M. Graham, which is a really beautiful paint line. It's a little more oily with the walnut oil than other colors, but, uh, but you get you know, adjust it to it. It's a little, a little much there. Let's see. Yeah, just put some of that in there. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on some dark that I mixed up, which is the oh, art by Robin. Hello, Robin. Um, which is that mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So I'm going to put his little legs in to start with. Birds have the most delicate little feet. And I do more work on it as I go, but I just kind of wanted to get it established. It actually kind of goes up like that. Okay. And now I'm going to put some of the darks in that are underneath the dark. It's underneath this wing here. A little bit of terps and a little bit of, you call it um, liquid. Okay, I'm a little heavy on that. Sometimes if I go a little heavy in an area, oh, that's a used one, I will get a little bit of um, Q-tip. And that, that kind of takes care of things. You can always wipe off color too if you put it down and it's not what you intended. Oils are very forgiving that way. Um, put his eye in because once I put his eye in then I can start talking to him. I don't know. I paint a lot of animals and I find I get to a place where I get the eye in and then I start to have like a little relationship with the whatever it is. Okay. All right, now we can start doing some of the opaque color. I really need a better easel that holds the canvas for me. I know they make them. Okay, um, so I'm going to start adding a little bit of alizarin which is a transparent still, but to darken underneath. Here. Alizarin is a great darkening red to use. And is it will make a purpley dark if you mix with ultramarine blue. I kind of got settled in with... Um, 
ultramarine and burnt sienna for a long time, but that's more of a warm dark. All right. So I'm going to get some, use some white, and then I also have a nice uh, color called ice blue for where it's not quite as white. Kind of mix some of this together. You can see what the transparency will start to do. And then I look around and see, okay, where else can I put some of this while well, it's on my brush? Because I am starting to use just one brush. Let me use a little bit of that transparent mix with some orange We're up in here. When I paint, I'm kind of like all over the place. You should see when I paint a room. I paint part of a wall and then go to a different wall, <laughs> and back to it, to it again, and then to a different part. But it all gets done eventually. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. And. Middle, middle vast native. And Karen, oh, me too, Karen. You like to work all over the place too. I don't know whether that's an artist thing or just some artists. <laughs> Every now and then, I get a student that likes to work like from the top down, or one section, and I just like I can't, I can't even. My brain doesn't compute. I like have to work the whole thing, and then it just all eventually comes together. Sometimes it can get kind of scary in the middle. I remember when I first started to paint, it just seemed like, how would I ever, hey, Lori, how would I ever, <coughs> excuse me, know that I was finished? You know, I would stay with a painting. <clears throat> and just paint it to death, basically. So it was really exciting when I did start to get a sense, you know, where all of a sudden I'd look at it and I'd say, done. <laughs> um, that was a good feeling. Um, the last couple times I've done this live online, I haven't finished while I was, you know, within that like 45 minutes to an hour, whatever it is that we can do. Um, but Hopefully I'll get faster. Because, you know, you, when you're not talking, when you're just letting your right brain do its thing, you can go a little faster. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more white in this the breast. Has anyone seen this bird uh, in their yard? Or in their, at their feeders? And I haven't seen this locally, but I just thought it was so pretty. And it's a red crested cardinal. I think it's like a cousin or something of a regular cardinal. Kind of sort of related, but not the same. I'm going to put 
this. Get some liquid in this. doing a little bit more on the background. I'm going to mix a little of the sap green with some lemon yellow. I'm going to see that in some places. Oh, that's pretty bright. Probably have to tone that down a little bit, just a bit. I like how the background looks being a, just a little fuzzy in different greens. So I'm gonna go with that. Now I'm going to tone that down by using a little ultramarine in yellow. Yeah, I have cardinals too, uh, which are always really fun to see, especially in the winter time. We had a little bit of snow a couple days here in Virginia, and when they appear, you know, at the backdrop of snow, it just kind of takes your breath away. They're so pretty. I just moved to a new condo, which is my first time living in a condominium and found out I can't have bird feeders. Said so they attract unwanted critters. So that's kind of different. But there's still a lot of birds around. They kind of land on the fence posts and, you know, stop by to say hello. I also have a duck that uh, had her, she was laying in my, the tray that's underneath my downspout the other day. Since then, she's been hanging around. I don't know if she's got a baby, but, or baby, and eggs or whatever. Um, but she's kind of sweet. When I was talking to her, her head was going back and forth like a dog will do, like they're trying to understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's kind of like a new friend. Okay, so I'm going to go with a little. Uh, I have a blue, a St. Remy blue. I'm going to see what that looks like with. A little bit of that yellow, the lemon yellow. It's a, it's a nice cool one. Yeah, I like that. Excuse me. I cough a lot. I have a, like a lung thing, so bear with me. Okay. I like that. I'm going to just put some of that straight in there, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty. I have a, a favorite color that's um, 
by Charvin. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I know it's French, so maybe it's a completely different way. Uh, and it's it's an expensive brand. But one time when they were on sale, I got this uh, St. Remy Blue. And I've just been hooked on it. And I use it a lot, especially if I'm doing a pet portrait. You know, there's a lot of times there's just a little kind of a flicker of blue in the eye. Uh, or I just find ways to to put it in because I just love it so much. So that's like my my splurge on color. I tried to be a purist there for a while and I was doing a limited palette. I can't think of the artist's name right now that I was following that's, uh, you know, loves the, the limited palette and I could do it all. I could get the colors and everything, but after a while it was like, but why? <laughs> I just like buying these different colors. They're so fun. It is a good way to learn though, if you're, um, you know, wanting to teach someone that's brand new to color and painting and everything, it can be very overwhelming. And just working with the limited colors teaches you a lot about mixing. See, now I'm just off on a little tangent with different colors, some purples in there. Okay, uh, here, I need to add some more of that dark because that'll be real pretty up against the white of the cardinal's breast here. Just really wanted to get rid of that white. Okay. Um, I need to get more uh, bright color on that crest. I'm not seeing my CAD red light, which I like to use a real bright color. I'm going to try to mix something that's closer to what I need. Sometimes you just start have to start getting a thicker color in there. Use enough paint to make things happen. That was a good lesson for today is make sure I have my cad red light out. I'm gonna look real quick and see if I can find it. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us and uh, all the way from Australia. I appreciate it. Sleep well. <laughs> and Eber, Eber, Jude, I'm not sure what your name is, but welcome. I'm going to see if I can find Cad Red Light. comes together. Doing great, thank you. Just uh, having fun with this demonstration. 
Okay, so cat lead light has a little more oomph. So we're going to put that in there. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Get some more color going. And it's a little bit cooler underneath his beak here. So anybody else uh, checking in here from Virginia? I know Cheryl, you're still here, Cheryl. You're here from Virginia. I don't know if it's good to ask people where they're joining from, but if you want to share, I'd love to know. Putting a little more uh, lizard crimson, that great dark here. Okay. So I need to go back and check out the darks again. That's when things start to look a little too fuzzy, then it's time to kind of punch up the darks. And I have my go-to dark here with the ultramarine. Oh, and neighbor state of North Carolina. Well, hello neighbor. North Carolina is such a pretty state. My next door neighbor where I lived before was from North Carolina and she always had a, a beautiful magazine that was all about North Carolina and the food and the places to visit. And so I used to watch her cat and enjoy uh, checking that out when I was over there. Put some, some of that favorite color that I like so much, which is the um, Naples Reddish Orange by Lucas. It has a wonderful glow to it when you put it down. And I'm seeing a pretty good glow underneath this branch. So now I'll look, where else might I put this? I'm going to see a bit of a glow under this leg here. Except I didn't put enough on there. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my grand dog who's visiting with me and he just kind of let out a little sigh. He snores too. <laughs> He's a wonderful 13 year old lab. Okay, I lost my dog, Bailey, who was my studio assistant, as I called her. She um, I had to say goodbye to her in uh, October, and it was one day short of her 19th birthday. So it's really great having uh, Jet here with me today because I haven't I had a dog in my studio for a little bit. I miss Bailey. She was a good friend, especially during the pandemic. She was always with me. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to do some of that dark that I see on the back of him. Kind of. Good to have a brush that has a nice edge to it, like this flat. This is a, a Monarch. It's the first time getting this brand. It's pretty good. Another brush that I like is a Silver Bristleton. 
doesn't quite have the edge that this one has, but it really is good for putting down a lot of color. And a lot of people rave about these with the rosemary paint brushes, but I've never tried them yet. I'd like to. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit more. I'm gonna put another color on here, which is a Gamblin Naples Orange. Almost out of it. And I'll put some of that on the, the branch too. For some of the light color I see in there. And then where can we put, this might be nice on the back of them. Even though it's not quite this color, it's a similar value and I like the warmth of it. Kind of is warm in here too. So some more of the grade color in here. It's kind of hard. The way I have this set up, I'm sort of looking past this light, so I'm not seeing the uh, color like I'd like. I don't know if anybody has one of these canvas lights out there. If you have any good suggestions, let me know. I was going to try starting out the demo demonstration where I was on camera. I don't really like that part, but um, it was just hard just when using the one camera to d be doing all that. So I just decided to focus it on the painting. <coughs> okay, this is toning this down a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna look for this ice blue that I'm using that's, uh, uh, who makes this one? I have a big thing of it because I use so much Richeson. It's very inexpensive, but I love the color and I love how it uh, moves on the canvas. It's just easy to move around. Um, and such a good color for a lot of places where it's just not quite white and you want to have it cool a little bit. I mean, it's called Richeson Ice Blue, but it's really, you know, blue-gray. Okay. So put a little bit of this in here. And down in here. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit of warm white. Kind of put some of this in here. Hello, I see someone else joined us. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, this is a Gamblin Warm White. And I like how it goes on too. For most of my, the regular white that I put down, 
I don't use titanium. Um, years ago, I studied with um, an artist here, Charles Kello, and he he taught a lot of people in the area, and he used soft mixing white by Winton. And you can get a really big tube of it. See how much I've been using this. And it's just slightly off-white, more than titanium. And it, just like the name, soft mixing white, it's just a little bit, I like the texture of it and the way it goes on. And this has a nice texture to this warm white, but it's just a little bit more white, more warm than the uh, soft mixing white. I don't want to use it there. I'll use some of the soft mixing over here. Bring it up here a little bit. I think I want to get um, a sense of that beak. You can open the beak. There we go. All right, so back to the to the branch. I put a little bit of that uh, ice blue on there too. Use one of my Q-tips. Right there. I always say I just want to put the color down and leave it and not stress about the details. <sighs> but that's like easier said than done. I haven't used much uh, brown, but I have used burnt sienna, so I'm going to mix some of this into to get some of the detail of the branch. This one kind of gray on me. You know, I'm seeing some purple in there, too. I might try a little purple mixed with the gray. One of my students said that I see purple all the time. I don't always. I mean, sometimes I see other colors, too. But basically, every color in the rainbow is in everything. And you start to see it the more you paint you see other colors and as long as you use the correct value, you can use any color really to describe things. I mean, if it's a, a warm light, you usually want to use a warm version of a color, but or if it's a cool light, use a cool version. Um, it's really fun. Anyway, all of this. some dark back in there. Mix in a little bit of my Liz uh, 
ultramarine, not a lizard, ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'll have to put his feet back in. I wanted to know where they were, but I'm losing them. Okay. Now, this is, a, this is like a little detail, but the eye. Oh, hey, Beverly. Thank you. Good to see you. Hey, Ashley. It's my daughter-in-law. It's nice to see you. How's that Avery today? That's my adorable little grandbaby. Okay, let's see. Actually, just noticed I had the eye a little bit in the wrong spot, so that was easy enough to fix. And all I need to do is just change what was over here a little bit. Okay, so what I wanted to do was put a little bit of light in there, in the eye. So it would come to life a little bit. And then go back and adjust it a little bit with the dark. And more dark up here again. This is not the best brush. It's a little flayed at the end. Okay, so I'm going to put a little light in there, like I was talking about. Uh, with the St. Remy blue. That's too big, but we can, we can tone that down a little bit. The caffeine is working against me here with my hand. Okay, so I'm going to leave that that way for now, but I will work on it a little more off camera and I'll get some of this stuff straightened out, but just to see the idea anyway. Okay. Using some of the alizarin crimson to darken underneath the beak. And I'll brighten that up with a little red also later. And put a little uh, orange in there to help describe that light that's hitting him or her. That would be good to figure out if it's a he or a she. I bit the uh, it might be a he because they usually have the brighter colors. But I don't know. You know, one of the things I was going to do this morning and then I completely forgot was to figure out what, uh, where this bird is usually seen because I just know I've never seen it around here in Virginia. Okay. So we got dark over here. I need to put some more light in. Uh, one thing I like to do 
Oh, okay, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> I hope to see you again. It's a pleasure having you join us. Um, okay. So, bring some of this down into here. In here, I'm going to get some of that purple again. See, that's what I bet if you looked at this bird and it wasn't in the light, probably not any purple going on here, but light just adds color to everything. It's just so awesome. It's like the best time of day uh, to go, you know, out looking at nature is, I call it the bewitching hour when it's, uh, the sun's just starting to go down and the light hits everything and just makes the magic happen. I did that once when I was living at the oceanfront and I was on the beach. And honestly, there was pieces of trash that were lit up that were looking beautiful. <laughs> but it, mainly I was looking at the, uh, the seagulls walking along all lit in the, <coughs> excuse me, the evening light. It was gorgeous. It's a good time to take reference photos too when the light is like that or if, when i do pet portraits i do a lot of commissioned pet portraits when i get a photo that has good lighting on it like that where part of the face maybe is lit by this the uh, sun or that time of day where the sun's going down it just creates great form and is a, makes a great pet portrait. Okay. Oh, so what I wanted to say, because it's getting close to where I need to probably stop, and then I will post it later after I finish it, is... Um, what I'd like to do is really make the contrast like, okay, there's a dark going on here. I lost it a little bit, but I have to go back and punch that up. Yeah. It's a little alizarin and burnt sienna. So get that dark back in. Okay, and then what I want to do to make that contrast is to lighten. See how that light is lighter than here? It's what we call lighter value. Yeah, just dirtied up that paint mix. Um, yeah, so you want to go in and, and make sure you get it light, light enough. And sometimes I'll even exaggerate more just because it makes the contrast with the light just so beautiful. You know, if you don't always have to do exactly what's happening in the photograph. You just use it as inspiration, but play up these contrasts. And the more you do that, the more depth you create in the painting and it's very exciting to see the difference once you do that so that's just there and then down here i see more and where else okay it's good to be darker here 
because of this light that's happening on the edge of uh, his, I don't know you would call it, you know, I don't think bird has fur, but whatever. Uh, you see, you go darker here. So I'll probably go even a little darker than that there. And uh, here along the top, I haven't lightened this yet, but I'll go much lighter along the top of the branch. And then I could even darken this in here uh, a little bit more. So again, it's creating that contrast. Is lighter underneath, which I'll go back and lighten that. So then I'll go even a little darker underneath here. So that's kind of the tricks of how we create a three dimension on a one dimensional surface um, by playing with those contrasts, playing with cool and warm, because in with warm colors, they come forward, cool colors recede. So if you're wanting an area to recede, it's good to um, use your cooler versions. And every, every color um, has a cool and a warm version. You just need to know those and use them to your advantage. So that's all I'm going to do today. I thank everybody so much for joining me. This has been really fun. And I hope you'll join me again next Wednesday at 9. Um, and um, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day.